Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, today, we have with us Iron Nishless, a founder of Tier One Rankings and CEO at Nishless Legal Marketing. Hi, Iron. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for taking out time. I know it's your evening. Um, you know, you're uh, lucky to, uh, you know, like be in a place where you guys don't have to wear masks in the open. Um, you know, uh, so Iron Iron is based out of Israel, a place, you know, I, I dearly want to visit. Um, Iron, thank you so much for taking out time. Uh, you know, I'm really excited to have you today because um, you know, like uh, legal marketing, uh, we have not talked about till now in this season, uh, you know, on, on our uh, e-coffee with experts series. So, you know, really want to know more about what you do and, you know, how you have seen uh, legal evolve and especially more about like, you know, not only global, but, you know, how, how is legal uh, evolving in Israel? But before that, you know, it would be great if, you know, you could introduce yourself and your business for our viewers. Sure, I'd be happy to. So um, as you mentioned, my name is Idan. Um, I um, grew up in Canada, um, did my um, undergrad and graduate studies in Boston, uh, Massachusetts, which makes me a big Red Sox fan, worked in New York for a while, then moved back to Israel, where I happened to be the first uh, legal marketer in the country. Uh, just happened to be that, which was cool, um, which actually meant that um, I had to literally go door to door to all the law firms and say, you need legal marketing. And they would say, what is that? Until one brave firm said, that's interesting, let's give it a try. And some 10 years later, um, all the top 20 law firms now have legal marketing. So it's, it's really developed. Um, we're still in our relatively early stages, but uh, um, um, the profession is fast developing here in Israel. Right. Well, I mean, but still, like, you know, you have been doing legal, like, you know, even like, you know, before moving back to Israel, uh, you know, uh, how, how did that happen? I mean, why legal or how, you know, tell us a little bit more about how that happened. So actually, I stumbled into legal marketing, like many of my colleagues, um, not intentionally. I studied uh, uh, marketing and global marketing at Emerson College. And one of my professors, Dr. Sylvia Hodges, she was one, she's one of the more, more prominent people in the industry. Um, it was her first year at Emerson and I was assigned to be her teaching assistant. Um, and one day she said, why, won't, why don't you do legal marketing in Israel? They told her because there's no such thing. She said, okay, so be the first one. They told her, I have no clue what to do. So she said, I'll teach you what you need to know. So that's how it got started. And um, I've been doing it since, and I've loved every day of uh, every day uh, of doing it. Amazing, amazing. Um, so, it, uh, uh, you know, like like you said, you know, like uh, you were the first uh, legal marketer in Israel, and you know, you have been doing it for more than a decade now. Uh, you know, and now you work with like the best twenty firms in Israel. Uh, again, you know, like pandemic, like pre-pandemic, pandemic, post-pandemic. Post -pandemic. I mean, how have you seen legal marketing change? That's a, that's a great question because that pan, the pandemic has actually changed the legal industry dramatically. Um, a study uh, recently published in the U.S. showed that 71% of respondents among the legal marketers, lawyers, and in-house counsel said that the pandemic will, re will reinvent the legal industry. Um, this is one of those, you know, like lifetime events where um, you can really see a shift in a whole marketplace. Um, legal marketing has been going through several changes the past years. If it's uh, alternative fees, if it's a legal tech, which is uh, dozens of billion dollar industry that was fastly growing. And what happened during the pandemic actually showed uh, the legal industry a couple of things. Um, one is everything is online. Yeah. Um, law firms, um, they did have LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter, but they use that as marketing tools. And for the first time, they had to actually rely on online for everything. You know, like as a service, lawyers, um, they are the trusted advisor. They're supposed yeah. to sit in a room with someone, let, um, I mean, um, uh, um, figuratively speaking, hold their hand, give someone confidence, look in their eye, um, show trust. And 
through a computer screen, it's very difficult to do that. Right. Um, a client hires a lawyer because they trust him, because he has confidence in him, because the energy he gets from him is, I want him in my corner, something bad happens. And uh, all this change, social distancing. You can't see your clients. You can't see your lawyer. You can't hire a client, not through uh, physically, but only through Zoom. So that, that's a huge change. And the law industry had to adapt and uh, change uh, um, to working online, collaborating online. Another thing, speaking of online, is you know, law firms, they work in silos. Um, each department kind of works on its own. There's not, not too much collaboration or, or information sharing amongst among the law firm. The bigger the firm, the less data that is shared. The more silos and, there are. Exactly. And when you work from home, it's even harder to share that data. So there's Absolutely. multiple challenges here that uh, the legal industry has to overcome. Um, so that's part of that seismic change. Another thing that we see is maybe the biggest shift or the biggest thing that comes out of this pandemic is the, um, the, um, the need for a service, uh, um, service that is quality service. Um, yeah. Lawyers are professional, especially where, where, where we work, which is the top 20 law firms. Um, the, the best law firms are all the best. The difference between A, B, and C, maybe they have a department which stands out or a partner who has more reputation, but more or less, all of them are very good. Uh, and the, um, what clients are actually looking for now, and it, it, it increased during the pandemic, is quality of service, not of professionalism, meaning who's more uh, attentive to our needs, who has added value, who's more receptive and uh, is more flexible, who has, um, um, who gets back to me faster. Um, yeah. So these are things that they sound very common in industries like maybe like um, cell cellular or uh, high tech, but in law firms, the clients don't, didn't really come first. Law firms thought that it's client focused, but it was very law firm centric. And now law firms understand for, for the first time the clients are demanding service. Right. And this will have a huge ripple effect because law firms are now changing their whole strategy to make to make themselves more client focused. So that's the, the biggest thing. And like we mentioned online, now law firms are using tools such as Zoom for webinars, which they right. didn't do before. More using LinkedIn, using more tools that allows them to be online, but also at the same time gives them more data. Right. And, they don't have, and it's the first time they actually have to analyze that data. Yeah. Uh, so there's lots of things going on. It's a very interesting time to be in legal marketing. Right. And also, you know, like, uh, again, you know, like, um, I'm, I'm not sure how it is in Israel, but like, you know, in the US, uh, you know, like traditionally, like, you know, uh, law firms are more about, you know, promoting on billboards, right? I mean, you, 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 you are like, you know, like, uh, on a highway and you know i mean in in boston i mean you know i still remember you know on the road you know the first time i was traveling in boston you know almost like seven out of ten big billboards that i saw were like lawyers right uh, so now you know like people are not going out i mean now they are but you know like in the pandemic like people were not going out social distancing was there, you know, everything was remote, people were home. So I think, uh, you know, that also saw a shift of law firms, like using social, not only for just being online, but also for lead generation, because, you know, the billboards are not uh, uh, working as, you know, they used to. Exactly. It also ties into something even bigger, even before the pandemic, actually, is that, you know, like, Firms were very heavy on PR. If it's you know like traditional press, if it's you know like billboards, um, different ways of advertising. But as time progressed, firms started using social media more. Now even more obviously, because social media gave firms uh, tools that they didn't have before. For example, um, they can control the content. Yeah. Um, and the billboard, you have this much room to put in, just like your number and the call to action. And it's a one-time thing. I mean, people see once and it doesn't change. And in social, you can create campaigns. You can make it more versatile. You can make it engaging. Um, in social, you can see who's looking at you. You have a like, you have a share, a comment. So you can interact with that person, say back, you know, write back, thank you, and engage. Um, in social media, 
um, you can see what's effective, what's not. You know, a billboard, you can't take down because no one's looking at it because there's no more traffic. It's going to be stuck there for two more weeks and you're going to pay for those two weeks. With social media, I can change my campaign to a different target audience and change my budget. So there's different things that really um, are, are much more effective with social. Right. Also, you know, like there are so many channels available, you know, like I am a firm believer of the fact that, you know, you should not target every channel out there because it's just not possible, you know, you choose less, but do that properly. So like, you know, from your experience, like what are, you know, like at least the main channels that a legal firm should not miss, you know, like uh, maybe, yeah, I mean, they should, you know, try covering all if possible, but it's not possible for every, every law firm, depending on the team. So what are the main ones that they should not miss out? So law firms are very traditional in nature. That means they'll be, um, they will support the same um, tools that others support because there's the competitors and they usually look at what others are doing or because that's what's common in the industry. I mean, the, the, the first tool is their website, which is their, um, that's what they showcase, that, that's their, their, their window. Um, and the websites are very, are very static in nature meaning 90% of a website of a law, firm, law firm's website traffic will go to the bios because at the end of the day, someone wants to see what a lawyer's number is to call them. Um, we as marketers try to put in, to cram into that, you know, like other stuff like about the firm, the different departments, success stories, et cetera. The second tool, which is the most effective is uh, email marketing because email marketing uh, is based on the premise that you have, uh, um, you have recipients, you have emails, email addresses, and that's your clients. And your clients always come first. So you want to add value. You want to share with your clients, client updates. During the pandemic, that was key because legislation changed all the time. Wear a mask. Who can go to work? Can you use public transportation? If someone has COVID, is that a sick day or is that a work day? So you have to, first of all, update your clients. So um, that's the most effective marketing tool for law firms is their social. Is there uh, email marketing? The, the whole discussion is, by the way, how much is too much? How much should you, um, how many times a day, a week, a month should you email to them? And how long should that be? That's a different discussion. And then you have social media, which serves as an amplifier. Meaning um, if you have your, e your clients in an email list, you want to tell your second uh, circle, those who you don't know about the content you created because you want to recycle it and you want to reach potential clients, right? So that's where you use social media. So you have a Facebook page, a LinkedIn page, and then you have tools to boost that to get to potential clients further along. Uh, Twitter is also pretty strong with law firms. Um, I would say um, LinkedIn is the biggest in terms of social, followed by Facebook in different country jurisdictions, depends where, for example, in Israel, uh, Facebook is huge. In the US, UK, it's more for hiring interns or social or um, uh, summer interns. And we do now see a shift of law firms using more and more Instagram in order to attract interns or, you know, like future lawyers, because that's where they are now. Facebook is already starting to be, you know, like on the decline, as people say. I mean, I didn't see that yet because I'm still on it, but so those are the main tools um, uh, that law firms use in terms of social media, the traditional right. ones. Right, right. Hey, talking about email marketing, you know, like, I mean, email marketing has also evolved, you know, now you have uh, like AMP emails where even like, you know, in the video, you can have like proper CTAs and everything there. I mean, you know, like, like email marketing has evolved so much, like any, any, any tips, like in legal marketing, like what type of emails work the best, like, you know, text emails, video emails, like, you know, what are your tips on that? So I, I, it's, let's split that into two. One there is our more informative professional emails where you want to, like client updates, where you want to inform nothing that happened now, um, new legislation, news, um, uh, providing uh, um, guidance of uh, something that will affect people um, in the legal, in pertaining to the legal industry. Um, the best way here is really content, a short paragraph, one paragraph. People are overloaded with content. You want to make it short and to the point, lead off with the bottom line. Lawyers like to write, I mean, lawyers like to write, period. <laughs> so when they do content writing, they write very lawyery. So you want to write in a way that is um, for everyone to understand. We call it the grammatist. If my grandma can understand, good. If she can't, rewrite it. Um, to make it approachable because your clients are not always lawyers. Um, give, give me the bottom line. 
what's, what is the new legislation? And then explain to me what I need to know. Don't like, give me all this info and then I have to try to understand. I have to call my lawyer. He's going to charge me for that. So no. Um, there's even a shift now that in the US during, during, during the pandemic, some of the larger firms, they made it very personal. They wrote a personal email, dear John. Um, I know that you've been heavily affected in, the, in your um, industry, which is retail by the pandemic. Um, my firm just issued a client update about incentives. I thought this might find um, I thought you might find this useful. Uh, open this link and we can also chat about it. So it's like you're making it very personal. You're giving the client a choice if he wants to read and also you're making the connection. Talk to me and I'll help you understand it if you need. Right, absolutely. Well, uh, Erin, you know, like before you go, uh, you know, like uh, what would be your tips, like, you know, like best practices for, you know, the perfect legal branding? Well, actually branding also had a big shift during the pandemic because clients interacted with lawyers and now they're interacting with the brands because everything is online. They see the website, they see the LinkedIn page. So, I mean, like we said, there's less meetings face to face so our client interacts with the brand as a brand. So, I mean, I, I like to, um, to address that in two ways. One is the brand as a firm and also a brand as the lawyers because at the end of the day, it's a service. People come because of the lawyers. So I'll start with the, with the latter. Um, lawyers should build their re brand reputation and online is one of the best ways. So start with LinkedIn, build your profile. Um, if we said that 90% um, of people go to the website, go to a, a lawyer's bio. Right. So 90% of the people will go to the LinkedIn page and only then to the website, just because your LinkedIn page shows who you really are, not right. who the firm wants you to see. If you're a high tech lawyer, on the website will say that you're the best high-tech lawyer, you're an expert in the field, you have expertise in A, B, and C. Maybe, but on LinkedIn, it really says who your network is, which groups you're affiliated with, your contacts, are they venture capitalists? Are they tech companies? Are, are you global? Are you domestic? I mean, it really shows who you are, it really shows Absolutely. a person. Absolutely. So personal branding, invest in your, in your brand, in yourself. Invest in your referral network, write content. Um, people won't stumble upon you. They have to, I mean, they, they will find you because you're out there. Create exposure. Um, the easiest thing to do if you're busy, lawyers are busy, share your firm's content. The firm, firms are issuing content on a daily basis. Just share a post and put in your two cents about it. Write, cli write client updates. Like you just said, and I completely identify with you, be different, make a video. Well, I mean, that stands out. Everyone is writing, so make a short video, 20 seconds about current real estate trends. Uh, one, two, and three. Um, build your network, engage with uh, like-minded lawyers outside of your jurisdiction. Um, um, you know, it, you don't have to travel the world now. We saw that everyone's connected. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, you can't really travel anyway. So, I mean, um, use that to your advantage. If you can't travel, then find the same time you would invest in traveling and meeting people, engaging, and building your network. Um, and the last thing I would do in terms of branding, personal branding, find your niche. Mm -hmm. um, like we said, lawyers are lawyers are lawyers. There's no due, due respect. They're great people. They're very professional, but they're seen as more or less, they do the same. Find one thing that makes you stand out, one niche. Um, if you're a litigator, find, uh, um, find a sector and a subsector that you manage to deal with that you know the best. For example, um, ag claims in agriculture or in high tech, you know, like, um, um, investing in tech companies that are in fintech. So I mean, the more narrow you are, the easier it is for people to find you. Then you can write content that's pinpointed to people. Uh, you make yourself an asset because you know something that your peers won't know because they know everything, but you know one thing is the best. And today the world is going toward um, from generalists to specialists. Right. Um, so that's my, that's my uh, understanding about personal branding, which is key these days. Well, thank you so much, and uh, you know it, it was fun having you, and you know you had you shared some really great insights. Uh, you know I would love to catch up again with you uh, sometime soon. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in person next time in Israel. Same here. Same here. Looking forward. <laughs> thank you.